Welcome back to the Big Block Factory. We are down here at Dandy Engines in Melbourne, finally. And we've got the big dog all loaded up on the engine dyno. We're here with the Harrop crew and also Frank from Dandy and uh, Nads, the calibration engineer. The crew here at Dandy have already got it all bolted up to the Superflow engine dyno. And we have actually uh, sort of calibrated everything to do with crank angle sensors and that sort of stuff and had the engine running. Uh, it's got running in oil in it at the moment, so um, uh, Frank then put it through a, through a run-in process where it was loaded between two and 3,000 RPM for about five minutes, I think it was. Got the, the pipes glowing a bit, which is nice, um, and he reckons everything's good to go at this stage. Following that, we've pulled the valve covers off and Frank's gone through and replaced or fitted all the second uh, inner valve springs to the engine, which were uh, left out for uh, to assist in the running in process so we don't damage the camshaft so that's all in there all the lash is set and it's pretty much ready to go we're just changing over the fuel to uh, ethanol and then I think he's going to fire it up and run it through it's still got the uh, running in oil in it and he wants to just give it a bit more of a run through with that then we'll drain it pull the oil filter off crack it open and see if there's any carnage inside which we don't want but uh, we're just going to follow the process and leave it up to the experts. Turn the fans on, we'll cool it down. If you want, we can drop the sub where it is. We live in the dream here, or maybe my worst nightmare. We just cranked her up to, I don't know what it was, about 5,000 RPM. And uh, she just made some horrible noises. And then it sounds like there's bits in the sump, so we're going to pull the sump off and have a look. But uh, I don't think we're going to go much further with it right now. At least we're at the right place if we need a rebuild. <laughs> yeah, true that. <laughs> This is Frank everybody, if you're in the Australian car scene you'll probably know of Frank anyway, he's a bit, he's a bit famous on the internets around these parts, so what, what's, the, what's, what's the course of action from here Frank? I'm just going to have a quick look at the plugs and just make sure that you know nothing got hot, as you can see the CAD plating's still on there, yeah, we're just going to have a quick look and make sure. Not the best start is it really? It's not, it's not <laughs> you know, but these things happen and you know when you're pushing the boundary on, on stock parts like that you know, um, things are going to happen. So even though there, was, there wasn't much revs in it, which is maybe there was a lot of torque going through the engine at the yeah, time. Yeah, like 740 foot-pound of torque, and it's hard to say what's actually happened. We know there's something broken in the engine, but, you know, once we pull the sump off, we'll have a look. I suspect it's probably a rod or rod bolt or something like that. Well, or? It sounds rod boltish, yeah, like, you know, rod related. Um, there's no hole in the sump. There's no block, hole in the though. sump. 
so I don't know if it was because I was quick at reacting or but no look you know, we'll, we'll endeavour to find the problem and get it sorted Wait, how's there a lifter there? Is that the means the block's gone? Yeah. The rods are still intact. It's a bit of block. Well, I, I can't see all the rods, so meaning like I wonder if it's broken one at the small end or something. It's like something's punched the block where the lifter is or near the camshaft or something. There's, there's a piece of the camshaft just sitting on the block. Is that a normal thing? <laughs> Never seen it. <laughs> Never seen it. <laughs> we just dropped a sump to have a look and there's obviously bits of engine in there. There's also a, a lifter and uh, some, some block parts. And when we've had a look on, up inside, the, the, the camshaft's actually sitting on top of the crank, which is obviously not normal. So, um, but it looks like Frank's having a quick look with a torch in it. I, we, it looks like the, like maybe the, the small end or something's punched through the piston and that's damaged other stuff and everything's just fallen out. Which, it, it's pretty impressive because it was basically just a, a engine stop sort of scenario there was no fires or anything like that that's really good for the internet but uh, obviously it's not maybe I can edit that in it's not good <laughs> you might get yeah. some more views <laughs> it's, um, it's all over for today I, I would imagine unless Frank's got no. big blocks no, and stuff I'm not that good <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a, you know, a big block ready to go but pretty good on the welder aren't you yeah, well, <laughs> I've broken some blocks so what, what's your plan, Frank? You want to get this onto a stand to have a look? Well, I mean, look, you know, if it's all right with Al, we'll, we'll get it on a stand and pull it apart and yep. see what we can do to help the program move forward, yep. you know. Um, we still don't know what's happened, but something, something's gone wrong. We just can't see upside down yep. with oil dripping. So maybe you should call Wazza and ask for that big dog. <laughs> the he big, wants to sell it. <laughs> the big dog wasn't allowed to be boosted because it was already... Oh, NA bills. It was 598 cube on a stock deck height. <laughs> Frank's made the executive decision to get the engine off the dyno and onto an engine stand so it can be stripped down to assess the carnage. Al isn't really worried about the engine being damaged, he's more concerned about disrupting the testing of Harrop's prototype supercharger kit. Electric cars in there? <laughs> Maybe you can use that V12 block that's just there. Looks cheap. Frank doesn't mess around and tears into stripping the engine down. On the plus side, we were able to see how the intercooler block has been integrated into the inlet manifold. This prototype manifold has been machined from billet. The production unit will be cast aluminium.
Removing the right hand cylinder head reveals a combustion blowout on cylinder number 2. No mean feat on an engine with 5 7 16 head studs per cylinder. See how that shiny ring around it? And it shows that the compression was just coming out. Each piston and conrod are inspected for damage as they are removed. Cylinder 2 came with a bonus 5G Wi-Fi camshaft and lifter. Could have just been the camshaft failure. <laughs> The front cam bearing was damaged and needed to be removed to get the remaining three quarters of the camshaft out of the block. It's a V6 camshaft. <laughs> Just needs the three bolts drilled. Now what's the chances? The other half of the... Of the other half of the lifter. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible. It's this one. Are we on camera? Yeah. I've never met someone so kissed on the <laughs> <laughs> Well, it doesn't feel like that right now, but anyway. Hey, I'm telling you now, there's nothing stopping us from putting it to the can bearings in it, washing it and putting it back together to a short mode tonight. But you say tonight? What, do you have to go on here? No. <laughs> you... I'm just thinking, at the end of the day, if we had another camshaft, we could probably screw it back together and put it back in the diner tomorrow. Who's got camshafts around here? Do you want to ring up Marcus? The, the, the cards on the, um, the thing are... Oh, it doesn't matter what it is. It's not big enough anyway. Okay. <laughs> We've got the engine stripped back down again and um, surprisingly it's not snapped in a thousand pieces which is just amazing. What do you think has happened here Frank? Well, I'm, I'm just taking a guess because A, I'm still trying to get, get over the fact that you haven't even put a scratch on anything. <laughs> well, I don't take it out. It's, it's hard to understand because it all happened so quick, but all we can see at this point is all we've got is a broken camshaft. Oh, I, can't even, I can't even understand how the camshaft could break in such a small part of, you know, in, in between two journals drop the piece out and not put in any scratches on a piston, conrod or a sump or the block. So I'm still trying to get over that shock. Other than that, I don't know what's caused it and I can't see any reason for it. Unfortunately, when we fit the camshaft, we don't know what's happened to that core along yeah. the way of its life up until the point we get it and we stick it in a hole, you know. It's hard to say. Mm. So what's the course of action now? Well, as you can see, we've stripped it down now. I think we just wash it. We just put it back together, get it back in the dyno and... So we found a camshaft locally to... Speed Pro has um, got a camshaft down there, so we'll send one of the boys pick it up and... Uh, we've got some lifters here in stock. Uh, Lou will be on the refacer. He likes to reface them to make yep. sure they've got a two degree taper on them. So the lifters was a big, as I explained to you earlier, it was a thing people were like, don't use a flat tap it can because the, the lifters fail all the time because of manufacturing processes or whatever. But Look, you, I've seen roller lifters fail, I've, I've seen steel camshafts fail, I've seen tool steel camshafts fail, which is like tool steel is the strongest of strongest. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, 
I'm an engine builder that favours flat tappet cams because they're just more durable in yeah. my eyes. That's just my opinion. Um, we just set a, no, I wouldn't say a record, but we just went eight zeros in a full weight prem with Carl Cox um, HG. It's a 23 degree small block Chevy and it has a flat tappet cam yeah. in it. So it's still going today. Um, I don't think that's uh, a a bad thing having a flat tap of cam. Yep. I, I'm personally not a, um, it's not my favorite to run a hydraulic flat yep. tap of cam. So I prefer, prefer a solid. solid. Yep. So are these it's mechanical, are but that's these just solids me. or are these? They, they, oh, oh, oh. These are gonna be hydraulic because you live in Noosa and I live down <laughs> here and uh, you won't have to seek the tap. Pretty nice again. place. You can bring your wife up and then do, yeah. do, do the top end I of my do car the every now and then. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. But look, you know, we're, we're very lucky that nothing horribly went wrong. Um, even though I didn't build the engine, the guys that did it didn't do nothing wrong. It's just, this is part of engine building. Things fail. Yep. And I'm not saying the part failed because we don't have a, a proper analysis of the what happened. All we know is we've got a broken camshaft and there's not much to fix it other than wash it, put it back together, try again. I feel sort of lucky, sort of not lucky. <laughs> what do they call it down here? Oh. Kissed on the d I I called you kissed <laughs> on the d because I can't believe we haven't even scratched the sun. <laughs> But All right. we'll put it together, Sounds get awesome. back on the dyno, and we can only try, you know. Formula One teams fail. Um, not that we failed, but a, a part has failed. Yeah. Poor old Glenn Seaton sat on top of the mountain yeah, with I a broken that. valve spring, you know. Yeah, I do remember So that. It, it, it happens. That was a while ago for those young people. Yeah, that was, what was that in like 1997? Yeah, 1990s. You weren't even born then, kids. All right, we've got all the crew mobilised. They're um, getting stuck into their various jobs, so Woody's going to chase them around and we'll see what goes on in Frank's pit crew to get this thing back together real quick. Frank was concerned about the head surface following the combustion blowout on cylinder two, so a light skim was in order. Brad machines the heads with a tooth out fast cut. The feed rate of the surface grinder is then changed and a final 1,000 slow cut leaves the heads with a perfect finish to suit MLS gaskets. Brad then starts grinding the valves and checks them for damage along the way. Two valves were found to be bent which were replaced. See how it's grey, so that's where I've left it in, and that line to there to there. So it's got like a, a 2 mil seat on it. After Brad confirms the valves are seating correctly, he then hand laps each valve with a smile. Vacuum is applied to the port to confirm the valve is sealing. The heads are then cleaned and reassembled. Lou loads the new lifters into the Warren and Brown tappet facer and refinishes the faces to his specs. Jake then places the replacement camshaft into a lathe to check that the taper on each lobe is correct. This ramp is what spins the lifter to promote even wear and longevity. Things. 
Frank's earlier concerns about the cylinder head surface also applies to the block decks. Jake loads the cleaned block into a machining jig and places it on the surface grinder. A dial gauge affixed to the cutting head confirms the block is levelled on the machine. Each deck is given a light cut to ensure the surface is suitable for multi-layer steel head gaskets. After being decked, the block is given a final clean in the hot wash. Frank's no stranger to high-powered big blocks and recommended that we increase the main bearing clearance from 2.5 thou to 3 thou. The crankshaft is handed over to Bob so it can be measured and ground to spec. It's JDM, yo. Right, uh, we're a few hours into it and we've uh, got everything cleaned up. It's all been through the parts washer, etc., and, and dried off and sitting back here. Frank did not like the, uh, the block surface, so he actually got uh, Jake to put it in the, the uh, what is it? It's surface grinder. Surface grinder, there you go. And uh, actually decked the block surfaces again and cleaned them right up. There was a little bit of evidence of, um, of leakage through the head gasket, so that's kind of what put Frank onto that, he's just, while we're here, we may as well do it. Um, Brad's got the cylinder heads and stripped them all down. He found a couple of bent valves on the front cylinders, which is, if that's the worst thing that's happened in this whole adventure, then it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. That's really. right. Uh, so they've grabbed a couple of second hand ones that they had lying around and um, he's gone through the heads and machine uh, surface. The surface, surface ground yeah, and made sure that all the valves seat up and, again. Uh, yeah, reseated all the valves and everything and, and tested them. So he's currently just putting them back together now. Guys have put in a massive effort and I'm, I'm very humbled that, that these guys have actually, you know, made this effort to, to basically help me out. And it's, um, it's pretty special actually. You know so, that Lou got those lifted out of his personal collection. He said he's been hanging <laughs> on to those. <laughs> yes, well, we were warned about lifters by, by the, um, the crew on the, in the comments section and it seems like they might have been right but um, uh, Frank and Lou they actually grind the lifters before they fit them even though they knew so it's, it's probably uh, it wasn't unfounded those comments so anyway he's, he's given me a secret stash so I uh, might, do I have to give me my firstborn perhaps <laughs> anyway we're ready to, to uh, start reassembling the engine hopefully uh, Frank's hoping we can get it together tonight and uh, be back on the dyno tomorrow, so fingers crossed. Frank replaces the damaged front cam bearing with a fresh unit before sliding the new one-piece camshaft in. Assembly lube is applied to all of the main bearings before the crankshaft is lowered into the block. Frank noticed a slight stiffness in the number two gudgeon pin, so it was removed and checked for run out. Nearly five, five, five thou bent. It was found to be bent, but luckily Frank found a replacement that is quickly linished and we are back on track. It's nice and zero. Cylinder number one piston is installed so Frank can find true top dead centre. 
A dial gauge is used on the inlet valve lifter so we can check the cam timing against the cam card. After some quick math and some squinting, it's found to be spot on. Frank applies oil to each piston before inserting them into the bore. Each piston is carefully installed using a tapered ring compressor. The head studs are installed after the heads are placed onto the block. Thread sealant is used as the threads are open to water galleries. Once the heads are torqued down, the valve train is fitted and the lifter preload is set. Zoom in on this. Watch our lift up. Watch it turn. Go looking for your Uber, bro. You're done. All right, we've got the engine back together. Or well, mainly Frank has, anyway. We did it together. It's uh, it's about half past midnight, so uh, we're we're all ready for for a sleep, I think. But um, it's been a bit of an, a marathon effort. We have found a few little other bits and pieces that were damaged in the the incident. Let's call it. Luckily. Frank has a lot of engines here and a lot of parts, so we were able to replace what was needed. So I think he's su supremely confident about it now, aren't you, Frank? Yeah, look, we'll give it a run. And that's what the dyno's for, you know. If something's gonna go wrong, I prefer it to go wrong there and we can catch it like we did. Yep. And we, we caught it because here we are, how many hours later, what, six, Seven hours later, we got the engine back together. So, it's a, it was it was an experience. It's a testament to Dan the <laughs> engines, though, too, to, to, for you to go, hey boys, can you put in some overtime and get it done, and to everyone to help yeah. out, yes. and yourself too, Frank. You know, we know you've got a wife and kids to go home to too. So, it's I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you. You've got to take the bins out too. Man. I've got to take the bins out there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I'm, I'm lucky enough. My my beautiful wife is. Uh, you know, very understanding, and she knows when this stuff's got to be done, it's got to be done. You guys come a long way, and you know, a shout out to uh, Bella, and um, you know, what a legend. Here we are, we've got the engine back together, thanks to her. <laughs> this is going to be back on the dyno tomorrow morning, and we're going to have another crack at it. But for that, you're going to have to wait till next week because this did not go to plan. <laughs> so <laughs> make sure you hang around and check out what happens on the dyno next week again. If you want to see more of Frank, we know you do, you can check out Harrop's channel. There's a lot of, Frank is involved in a lot of Harrop tuning and uh, you can see his wisdom on there. And also on Full Boost, we've done a few videos with yeah. Luke at Full Boost, so check him out. A lot of stuff going on in there, a lot of success. Thanks guys. And uh, also a great guy. So <laughs> he's blushing now. Nah, no, no. My hair's going more curlier. <laughs> All right, we're going to go home to bed. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. I'm keeping those parts. It's good to go. What are you talking about?
Maybe we can do a raffle and sell them on. <laughs> One broken camshaft for sale. Nasty. You didn't forget the assembly lube then, did you, Frank? I oh, sure didn't. <laughs> just check it. Just check in the comments. I'm sure someone will write that as that's not enough. It's Frank's first day on the job here. <laughs> How much is too much assembly, Lou? Yeah, there when, it is. when it turns into CV grease mud in the bottom of your sump. <laughs>